you know that song that goes, dumb ways to die. Right now I'm thinking, dumb things you buy. <laughs> I thought I'd do a video for you guys of some of the dumb things that we bought that we never ever used for backpacking or that we brought with us one time or another and we realized we didn't need and we would never brought again. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I didn't get any of this gear for free. I didn't get a discount on any of this gear unless it was just on a regular sale for everyone else. I'm just passing on these items to you so that you don't make the same bad gear choices that I did. Here's our first item. This is a Solio. I don't know if you guys have seen this. You guys might be too young. This is one of the very first solar panel rechargeable things that came out way back. I don't even know how long ago, maybe 15, 16 years ago. It's supposed to have an internal battery and if you leave it on your pack, it's supposed to charge up and, and then you can plug it into your phone. It never seemed to work that well for me. It never seemed to charge very well. Uh, maybe that's because here in Canada, when you're going hiking, you're in the trees a lot of time and so there's not a whole lot of sun. It just seemed like it was a whole lot of useless weight and just a battery bank ended up being a lot more efficient. So for me, a battery bank or two is probably about the same weight as this thing and a lot more useful. Another item that I don't think you need if you're just going backpacking are really heavy spikes. These things have really large spikes on the bottom and really heavy big chains. A lot of people carry these, but they are really heavy. I think this is the kids version, so it's probably a little bit lighter than an adult version. And I'll tell you how much this weighs. But if you need spikes that are that big, you probably need crampons at that point. So if you're going up an actual mountain pass and it's going to be super steep, you probably just need crampons. These are 12.34 ounces. What I use is what's called Life Sports Gear Spike Trail. And I use a small. Make sure that you get them the right size for your shoe. Because if you don't, they're just going to fall off and move around. But this is a small. And I have an eight and a half women's shoe. And these things are, I've got them in a different bag here. I used to have Catula Micro Spikes, which are big and heavy. You can see I'm using the Catula bag. These here are probably half the weight, maybe even less than half the weight. And you can see that the spikes are a lot smaller and the chains are a lot smaller, but they're very, very durable. I've been using these things for a couple of years and they're fantastic. And I bought them for everybody in the family because they're so light compared to the other ones. I'll tell you the weight on them in the proper bag. These are only 6.7 ounces. So about half the weight, 6.7 ounces versus 12.39. So about half the weight, yep. Yeah. And these work amazing. I trail run in these all the time in the Canadian Rockies and I've never needed anything heavier or bigger. So for me, the bigger spikes are just a waste of time when there's something like this that you can buy instead. Next on the list is the Zero Aqua Cloud shoes. These are my husband's. He's going to be using these on our paddle boards, but we thought we could use them for backpacking and you totally can but there are a couple of things that made it kind of inconvenient. One, the sole is so thin, you can see, that hiking in them is almost impossible. If you had a blowout with your shoes and you needed something to hike in, these would probably not be a great idea. As well, you can see that they have something that goes between the toe. That means that you can't wear them with socks unless you want to misshape in your socks and uh, use your socks with these, or you have to bring toe socks. I was always bringing an extra pair of toe socks and bringing an extra pair of socks just adds weight in your backpack. We have changed to the Z trails. They are just a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can see the difference there. Enough that it doesn't hurt as badly when you step on something sharp. And you can see that you can also wear your socks in these so you don't have to carry an extra pair of toe socks with you. I'll show you the difference in weight. It's not really that much. So these are 298 grams and these are 254 grams. So don't think that because they're a little bit thinner that they're going to weigh less because these actually weigh more, likely because of the strapping. So not only did we get a more functional shoe, but we also got a shoe that's a little bit lighter. And speaking of shoes, I can't think of anything more useless than a pair of Crocs. These ones are missing the back and I'll tell you how much they weigh without the back. 133 grams. With the back, they're a lot heavier. These are obviously very worn out, so I wouldn't take that as gospel for the weight. Crocs might be light, but they take up a lot of space if you want to put them inside your pack or inside the back pocket of your pack. You pretty much have to hang them on the outside of your pack. These you can slip into the side pocket or a back pocket of your pack really easily because they're super flat. Not only that, but the ones without the back strap, 
and even the ones with the back strap are really hard to use on river crossings and they're hard to hike in and they can fall off your feet if you're wearing them in a raging river trying to cross it. These definitely stay on your feet a lot better. An alternative pair of Crocs that works really well in rivers and you can hike in them are these kind. I'm not sure what they're called. They're like a men's boat shoe. I'll tell you how much they weigh. They're 428 grams for a pair, so that's almost double what these weigh. If you definitely want to carry something heavy and be super stylish when you're backpacking, I guess you could go for these. My husband just wears these on the beach now or wears them in the summertime around town. Another super useless item that we purchased a long time ago is a sweet water filter. You do not need filters like this. This is a filter that will take viruses and everything else out of your water. But here in Canada, we don't have viruses in our water. You don't need anything as elaborate as these pump filters. And these are seriously a waste of time. You have to assemble it and then you have to stick one end into the river or the water source and pump it. And you can imagine how long that takes to pump water. We used to do this back when that was the only kind of filter available. Honestly, this thing hasn't come out of the pouch in 15 years now. The only time you would ever need something like this is if you're overseas, maybe in a third world country. Really all you need is like a Sawyer filter or a Solomon filter or a platypus filter or a Katadin Bee Free, something that has a squeezy bag that you just put the water in and you squeeze it. Those are the best kind of filters for Canada and the US for doing backpacking. Here's something else that I have found that's super useless. These are the Anywhere Shower. And I'm not just saying this one in particular, I'm saying all wet wipes. Wet wipes have water in them already, so they're heavy. It's like carrying an extra bottle of water on you if you wanna take a bunch of wet wipes. Instead, you can use things like these Weissy wipes. These are completely dry, and when you put water on them, they turn into a really nice big towel. We use these as replacements for our toilet paper, and we also use them for washing our body if we need to, or even for washing out pots, or anything else that needs to get wiped down. Dogs, feet, whatever. They replace so many things, and they weigh practically nothing. We usually take about five of these per day per person, and that seems to be all we need. Another thing that's totally useless for backpacking is an emergency blanket. Unless you're gonna use this to put down underneath you on the snow to lie on top of, there's absolutely no reason for these. If you already have a sleeping mat and a sleeping bag and a tent or even a tarp, there's no reason to carry an emergency blanket. If you want to carry an emergency blanket, do it when you're day hiking and you don't have all those things with you. Even when we're day hiking now, I bring the Hyperlight Mountain Gear Dyneema tarp because it weighs hardly anything. And if we're ever caught in a storm with our kids, this is the best way to go. Set it up in the trees and everybody can huddle underneath it. We can even spend a night under this if we need to. And speaking of tarps, here's another item that has never even been out of the package. This is a really cheap Bluefield tarp that I got online. We've never taken it out. It's just really heavy. Compared to this Hyperlite tarp, it's smaller and it's way heavier. The only reason I could ever think of using this would be maybe to put over a dog tent or a dog shelter because you really don't care if this thing gets torn because it's super cheap. But other than that, I can't imagine ever carrying one of these backpacking. Another item I purchased that we have never even taken out of the container. This is a folding bucket. You can see this thing is huge and it's for carrying water if you have a large group of people. I can't imagine trying to carry water in this and the water is sloshing around, especially when you can get like a hydro pack container that's like three liters or even I think there's a five liter one. Why would you carry one of these? They're a lot heavier and they're a lot more useless. Something else that we bought along the lines of hygiene that is still in the box. You can see it's still in here and it's still wrapped up. This is supposed to be an easy shower. You're supposed to be able to stick it on the end of your C-Knock bottle. They nicely gave you a little cap here, which is nice for a sport water bottle. You're supposed to be able to put this at the end of your Canuck bag. I think that's how you say it, Canuck. And it turns into a shower. I mean, it's super light. If you really want a shower out there, you totally could take it with you. But we've never taken it just because we seem to always end up at a lake at some point and we just jump in the lake. So I can't imagine what this would be for. Maybe if you have to wash your dog down in your truck if they rolled in some doo-doo or something. I mean, it's light enough. If you feel like you need a shower out there and you're not going to a lake, then go for it. But we haven't taken it out of the pack. Dumb purchase for us. Another item are these easy reach bics. 
I watched tons of YouTube videos where people said that these are awesome because you can use them to light your stove a little bit easier because this long part here keeps your fingers away from the stove and the flame. These things never work. I don't know what it is with these easy reach things. I didn't even bother taking this out of the package because we've already tried to use two or three of them and they just never worked. I don't know if we're just too high up here in Canada or what, but the things never light and they're way more expensive than a regular Bic. Regular Bic seem to work. These things, not so much. This is why you gotta be careful when you're watching YouTubers and their opinions. Here's something else that I bought that I've never taken out of the package, mosquito coils. There are a couple of lakes that we go to where the mosquitoes are ferocious. I seriously thought about taking one of these spirals and just never did. We ended up getting a flex tail tiny rappel instead. Here is the flex tail gear tiny rappel. I do not take this case. This case is big, bulky and heavy. I just take the little flex tail. It's got a little carabiner on the end. We'll see if this thing is gonna be on the don't take it backpacking list next year because we'll see if we actually use it. We did carry it with us to those lakes that we thought were really buggy and that had been really buggy previously and we didn't even end up using it. It's definitely a lot better than the other thermocells out there. I believe it's lighter than even the small backpacking thermocell. This is 5.5 ounces and you charge this with the USB and it's actually also a lantern. So you get a dual purpose out of this thing. So that's great. Here's something else that we have. I didn't actually buy this. My dad gave it to me, but I have never used it. It's an inflatable seat cushion by Eddie Bauer. Can you imagine stopping on the trail and you're really tired and you just want to have a break and you have to stop and pull this thing out and blow it up? I cannot imagine it either. I think I'd be pretty annoyed if I had to blow this up every time I wanted to sit down. It's a really good concept, maybe if you're car camping. But I think that for me, for backpacking, it's just too much of a pain in the butt. I guess you could take it out and sit on it without blowing it up. That might work. But it is a little bit heavier than what I use currently. We have 1 8 inch pads from Gossamer Gear, and these things are so light, they practically weigh nothing. This is the 3 quarter body length version and we put these underneath our sleeping pads just to give us a little bit more warmth. If it's a cold night, we fold them up and put them in our chairs and we sit on them. We also sit on them on benches and we also take them skiing and sit on them in the snow when we're having lunch. This, I just cut off at the end of my pad. So my pad is a little bit shorter. I'll tell you how much this weighs, 26 grams. So 0.91 ounces, it's not even an ounce. So you can see that this is something that's way nicer to carry than this thing. Or you can get one of these butt pads. They are super lightweight and a lot easier to take out. This one's a little bit ripped, unfortunately. <laughs> a lot easier to take out than a blow up seat pad. Along the lines of sleeping pads, I've got this switchback. A lot of people like sleeping on these instead of the blow up mats, but not me. The reason we got these was because we had to send back one of my Nemo tensor pads because it had a hole somewhere we couldn't find. And then we got gift card money back from Nemo, so we had to buy something. So we thought we'd buy these switchbacks and try them out. You can see they're still in the box. We've got two of them. Haven't tried them yet. My husband's trying to convince me to go winter camping in a tent. Hasn't convinced me yet. So these things are probably going to stay in here until we go camping when it's a lot colder than just shoulder season. Because in the shoulder season, again, we just use these and they work great and they're a lot lighter. Something else we have that is still in the box is this little tiny mini toothpaste. We stopped using mini toothpaste because these are pretty heavy compared to toothpaste tabs. You just put two of these per person per day into a little baggie, throw them in your med kit, and these are way lighter than a little toothpaste. You know that you never use the full little toothpaste when you're on trail. You only use part of it. I guess you could squeeze them out and take a smaller bottle of it. This weighs a lot more than the little toothpaste tabs. Of course, if you take all the tabs and you take the case, that's not really helping your cause. The other thing you don't need is camp sud. I couldn't even find my bottle of camp suds to show you, but we don't use camp suds anymore. We use this thing called Summit Suds. This is powdered soap. We do have a little tiny container somewhere to put this in. I couldn't find it for you for this video, but you just put this powdered soap that doesn't have any water in it, so, that, so it's gonna be a lot lighter than regular soap, because soap does contain liquid, into a small container and throw it in your first aid kit. Uh, the other dumb thing that we bought were cheap camp chairs. We went on Amazon and we thought, oh, that's a really cheap backpacking chair. Let's get that. Well, 
chair ended up to be about two and a half, three pounds. I don't even have it here with me right now. It's in my car because I sit in it to have a drink after we've gone uh, fat biking or mountain biking. There's a lot of different chairs that are great and they're light. There's no way I'll ever take that other chair with me backpacking. Get something that's under a pound. There's a Nemo Elite chair that just came out, which is absolutely amazing. I don't have it here, so I can't show you. There's also the REI Flex Light Air. This is under a pound. This is the same weight as the Helinox Chair Zero. Again, just a pound. If you want something a little bit sturdier, that's a pound and a half. There's the Big Agnes chair. And my husband loves this thing. He's okay with carrying the extra half pound just for the extra stability. But it's only half pound more. It's not like two and a half pounds more. This is my Helinox Chair Zero. I've got a Dyneema bag for it just because I like to keep it nice and dry. And so I've replaced the Helinox bag. This one belongs to one of my kids. So if you want to replace like this REI Flexlite Air bag that's all mesh with something that's not going to get your chair wet, you can get yourself one of these Dyneema bags. Uh, another thing I bought is this tent seam sealant. It's still in the box. I don't even know why I bought it. I must have thought that I needed to seal one of my tents and it came sealed. I'm not sure, but there's absolutely no reason for me to have bought this. These cork balls are really great to roll on, to get rid of your aches and pains in your feet and inside of your legs and your quads and whatnot. But don't do like me and get this big one because it's really hard to fit anywhere in your pack. <laughs> get a smaller one, you can get them half this size. Something else that we bought that we no longer need and we don't no longer use are these really thick hut booties. Now to be fair, I thought these were a lot lighter when I bought them, I don't know why, I didn't read the specs properly. These were for my son. But we do have hut booties from the old days that we did use in huts and we used them to walk around outside in the snow and we thought maybe we'd use them for backpacking but honestly they just take up too much room, they're too thick and they're too heavy. So instead of these, if you just want something warm to sleep in, you can get these goose down booties. They weigh nothing and they're amazing. You can sleep in these and your feet are toasty warm. If you want something that you can walk around in outside, you can actually get waterproof shells for those or you can get something like this. These are the Montane booties and they're amazing. They're way lighter than a regular hot booty. These are the lightest booties that we could find that actually have a nice bottom to be able to walk around outside because I wear these in bed. I don't want to have to put my shoes on if I have to get out of the tent to go to the washroom at night. So this is what I wear outside of the tent and I just brush off the bottoms when I'm on the way back into my sleeping bag. These weigh 177 grams a pair which is 6.24 ounces. Another thing that I bring too sometimes instead of these, if it's not that cold out, I'll bring these. These are the North Face slippers and they've got a really nice sole and they're great for walking around camp and these don't weigh a whole heck of a lot either. They're 10.79 ounces, so like four ounces heavier than the other ones. So you gotta decide if you wanna carry something this heavy. But I find that they're really nice for keeping your toes warm and for walking around camp. If you're not gonna bring these with you, so you get rid of this weight, you get rid of the weight of the hut booties, you bring the North Face ones, but only of course if you don't have any creek crossings that you need sandals for. You can still bring these because these weigh nothing. I'll show you how much they weigh. 1.77 ounces and I got these with the extra fill in them. You don't have to have all that fill. So there's only a couple ounces difference there. So if you wanted to keep your feet warm at camp and you don't have creek crossings, they're a really good alternative. I wear these all the time at home for my slippers. Another item that I bought that was totally useless still in the package, I actually got two of these. There was some dumb advertisement where these were really cheap, so I got them. They're earth packs. They're a fully waterproof backpack. These would be great if you're going in a canoe, doing some canoeing, fantastic, but you definitely don't need anything like this to go backpacking. If you want something that's relatively waterproof, get a Dyneema bag or a bag made of Ultra or out of Alula, something like that, that's just about totally waterproof. These are really heavy. No need for this unless you're gonna be doing some boating. Last item that I got as a bonus item when I purchased a bunch of stuff for Garage Grown Gear are these dishes. They're plates this way and then they snap together. They're called snap fold dishes. Let's see if I can get a snap happen here. They're kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, bit of a pain in the butt. Okay, as I struggle with this, you get the general idea. They're kind of a cool concept. 
But if you're ultralighting, you might as well just eat out of your mug. If you're bringing a mug or out of your pot, because you definitely have to cook in your pot and you already have it, so you might as well eat out of it. I guess if you have a family and you don't bring mugs, then this would be an all right idea. You can see that the food will get stuck in here and then you have to open it up to clean it. And I'm not really sure how you're gonna clean underneath the snaps and behind the snaps on both sides. I think that you would probably need a toothbrush to get in there and clean these properly. Say if you had some spaghetti sauce or something, it'd probably get in behind these snaps. And to me, I think that's kind of gross. Maybe other people have a different opinion on these. They are okay to pack. I mean, you can slip them into your backpack this way, but they are a little bit sharp too, I find. So you might end up cutting the mesh on the back of your backpack if you're putting these in the back. So probably don't put them in the back. Anyway, I don't think we're ever gonna use these. These are probably just gonna stay at home or get sold to somebody. One more thing is big, huge cans of gas. Unless you're going on like a two week trip, there is probably no way that you're ever gonna need something this big. One of these is good enough for our whole family for like a three night trip. And when I go by myself and I go for four nights, or even five nights, I take the smaller one of these. I do have a video on stoves with uh, stove weights and how efficient they are in their fuel consumption. I will put that video up here so that you can click on it and take a look at it. And I've got charts on there to help you figure out how much fuel you need. And you'll realize really fast when you start backpacking that you don't need as much fuel as you actually think you do. So hopefully this helps you guys make some better decisions than we did on backpacking gear. Hopefully this video finds you before you end up buying the same stuff that we did. Okay, now I have to put all this stuff away. That's the problem with doing these videos is it takes forever to bring everything out of the boxes that they're stored in and then you have to put it all away after. But I'm doing it all for you guys, so please make sure that you subscribe and like my video to let me know that this was definitely worth it. Thanks so much and hopefully we'll catch you on the next video.